we have Father Chase Hilgenbrin uh, with us. He has reached out to us with a wonderful reflection about the murder of George Floyd. And I think that he's a very beloved priest in our community. He has visited, visited us with his mom and dad, and he spent a week with us preaching in our masses for Pentecost two years ago and visiting our schools, high schools in the area, our Blessed Sacrament School, and he has made a great impact in our lives, in our community. He was a former uh, high-profile footballer and now a priest in the diocese near Chicago, Peoria, and he has a, a very straightforward message about what's happening in the world after the death of George Floyd. And I think that he has gone deeper and deeper in his reflection. And I want to share that with all of you, Blessed Sacrament community. I am Father Sergio, your parish priest. Seems like the only conversation that's taking place throughout the entire world in the past week and a half is what we should do in the wake of the George Floyd murder. What is our response? Those responses have been so distinct and the opinions about it have been so varied that maybe it's even adding to the confusion. Where are we gonna find clarity? That question was posed to me just this past week. I'm on a group chat with some of my best friends from college, my teammates from Clemson University, among them African-Americans and one of them, one of them was my classmate, a guy that I spent every day with on the field, a guy that I, I lived with, a guy that I shared daily meals with, a guy that I even worshiped with. We went to the Catholic church together. We talked faith together. And he posed this question. He said, what is the church gonna say about this? Or what is our faith perspective? Can we gain clarity from our faith perspective? Basically asking, what would God say about this? And how can we be informed by someone who's not human? Now that's the right question. Because God has the metric by which we measure the infinite dignity of humanity. The one thing that unites humanity in all of our diversity is that we all have within us an immortal intellectual soul. That means that we are distinct from every other one of God's creations. We are distinct from every other animal. We were given an intellectual soul, which means that we have the greatest gift that we possess as humanity is the ability to choose, to make free choices. And that's why we desire so much to be free. And the purpose of making free choices is so that we could choose. We are not bound by instincts like animals. We are able to choose love. Even a world that doesn't know God often responds to tragedy or to, or, or to evil in our society by saying, why can't we just love? Well, oftentimes the problem is we can't agree on the definition of love. But we know instinctively that we need to, and that's what we were made for. And in fact, we were made above all to love God above all things. That was the reason he created us. That is his desire for all of eternity. And that's what we were made for. Maybe that's what we need to get back to. But that is the dignity that is given to every single human person. That is the metric by which we can measure human dignity. And if we have any other metric, including race, anything that's exterior, well, I guess we can continue to have diverging opinions. We can make distinct choices. But how can you argue then that there is infinite dignity of a human person without going deeper, without going inside to the person, going into the soul, the one thing that unites us. In fact, God did create in diversity. And it's one thing that shows his vastness, his majesty, that he's not a simple mind, that he is an intellectual creator. Isn't that the same thing that we say when we see a, a talented artist or a talented screenwriter or a talented novelist? We say, what a brilliant mind vast, majestic mind, creative. There's something about them that, that says, that, that book, that, that masterpiece says something about the creator. Well, the diversity in humanity is that same thing that says something about our creator, the one who created us. And so any offense against humanity is actually a sin against God's intelligence. We're actually saying God made a mistake. That's what racism is. It's actually saying God made a mistake. 
in, in making this diversity. And are we surprised? Are we surprised that this is happening in our society today? Because we've, we've used that metric. We've tried to kick God out of our society. That's the faith perspective. And in doing so, we have been making decisions in our society for so long about the exterior of a person. When there's not a common metric, we say things like, this person's too old. Maybe God made a mistake in letting them live this long. Or this person's too young. Maybe God made a mistake in, in allowing that person to be born or at least to be conceived. What exterior measurement? And those are egregious sins against humanity, just as racism is. But that's the thing. When we keep thing on a, a metric on the exterior level, we have no way to argue whether one thing is better or, or, or worse. We have no way to, to say that we are all one unless we go to God, unless God has the ability to inform us of why we were created with an intellectual soul, with an immortal soul, so that we could choose one another, so that we could live as one. Isn't that what Jesus prayed for the night before he died? Go to John 17. Jesus prayed that we would be one and that we would be one with him in the Father. That is God's dream for us. Faith, asking how faith can form, inform us, asking the faith perspective, asking how God will inform us, that's the right question because it's the only metric by which we will come to peace. Y'all, we need to pray for our country because we have divorced that perspective from our society. That's why the, con the confusion continues. We say that we're a nation under God, we better get back to it. Our world better get back to it. Y'all, if we wanna respect one another, if we wanna live without racism, if we wanna live without any exterior factor being the measure of our human dignity, we need to go deep. We need to go deeper into ourselves. We need to look at one another and see what God has created. And when we see an, an immortal soul living in another, that's the way that we're gonna finally be able to choose in all of our diversity. That's the way that we're gonna be able to choose to love.